Today's learning target is I can connect partial products and arrays to the standard algorithm of multiplication. And standard algorithm means it's a certain number of steps, okay, that we are going to use to solve a multiplication problem. And we're going to see how it relates to the partial products and arrays methods that we have learned in the past. So that's our learning target. So let's look at a problem real, here, real quick. This looks like what you are used to solving. You have an array here and we are using our expanded form, okay? We took 31 and we use the expanded form of 30 plus one because it was a three in the tens and one in the ones. And then six is just six ones. We wrote it on the other side of our array. And then we multiply our columns by our rows. Six times 30 was 180. Six times one is six. When you add the inside of those boxes together, 180 plus six, you get a sum of 186. Okay, and that is actually your product, your answer to multiplying those two factors. We also did partial products, which look exactly the same, just a little bit different without the fancy box, okay? You're still using that expanded form of 30 plus one, okay? And we're taking the six and we're multiplying it by both the 30 and the one. So six times one was six, six times 30 is 180. And you add those together and you get 186, and that's your final product. So how does this relate to the standard algorithm? Essentially, it's the same thing. We're still multiplying by our place values. We're just gonna kind of do it in a shorter version. We're gonna start by multiplying our ones. Six times one. Six times one is six, okay? Now, we're gonna take our six and we gotta multiply it by the tens place, the six times the three, which is 18. We're just gonna write it right beside it. Notice that I got the same answer. One thing I want to point out here is that I am multiplying a six times 30. This three in the tens place really represents 30. So that's like 18 tens, okay, which makes 180 plus the six ones that we have, which is 186. Okay, so it's still doing the same thing. We're just not writing it out in an expanded form. So six times one we did first, six times one is six, and then we cross over to the tens place. Six times three, is 18 and we wrote it down right beside to finish our product. Okay, what if we wanted to use a larger number? So let's look at a two by two. That problem was a two digit by one. So look at this problem. I want you to look at the numbers, check behind me, check my work and make sure that I wrote in the correct expanded form. This 15 is a one in the tens and a five in the ones. Did I, did I break that apart correctly? Did I decompose that 10 plus five, 20 plus four? Okay. And as we do the same thing with the array, we're multiplying together the columns and rows. So the 20 row times the 10 column, 20 times 10 is 200. 20 times five is 100. Four times 10 is 40. Four times five is 20. And then we would add those four numbers together, making sure that we line up our place values correctly. That's very important. And we would get our final product of 360. Over here, I'm using the partial product method. And this one is very close to the standard algorithm. You can kind of see the progression. It starts out more with your boxes and your expanded form, and then it's starting to kind of mutate over a little bit closer to that regular standard algorithm. We look at this one, we're still doing the same thing we did over here. Notice how the numbers match, okay? Five times four was 20. Well, there's a 20 right here. Four times 10, because that one's in the tens place, is 40. Here's my 40, okay? Then I'm gonna do the 20 times five, because that two's in the tens place. 20 times five is 100. There's my 100. And then 20 times 10, that one's in the tens place, is 200. There's 200. Notice these four numbers are the same. So we're just doing the same thing, just without the fancy box. And when we add all these up, making sure that we've lined up our place values correctly, we get 360 again. So it, that's a good way to check your answer. If you know both methods, you solve them both with the same numbers, you can check your answer and see, did you get the, the same answer both times? If you did, then more than likely your answer is correct. So what if we wanted to do this with the standard algorithm, okay? 
Now this one's a little bit different because it has two digit by two digit. So there's gonna be a little extra step here with this version. All right, see, as I am going along and solving this problem, if you can relate it to the array and the partial product, can you see any similarities? Okay, so I'm gonna start multiplying my ones, like I told you with the other problem, four times five. Four times five is 20. Okay, I'm gonna put my zero and I'm gonna carry my two above the ones. Do that one more time. Four times five is 20. Four times five, put my zero down, carry my two above the tens place, okay? Because that was a 20, two in the tens place, carry it above the tens place, okay? Now, I'm going to remember from the last problem, we still have to take this ones place number and multiply it by the tens on top as well. Four times one is four. You're gonna add these two, these two that you carried. We're gonna add those two tens. So four times one is four. This is really four tens, five, six tens, okay? And that's gonna be 60, okay? So four times five was 20, carried my two. Four times one, okay, or four times one ten is four tens plus two tens that I carried makes six tens. So that makes sense to why it's 60, because it's in the tens place. All right, a little trick that I like to use. I'm finished with this four. I'm gonna cross them out. I'm finished with this two. I'm gonna cross them out. It helps me not get confused when I go to the next step, not to reuse numbers that I've already used. Okay, now we're gonna take the two in the tens place and multiply it by this 15 on top. The two in the tens place multiplied by the 15 on top. Now, this is the tens. This is not just a two, it is two tens, okay? And we need to put a tens placeholder, okay? Right here to hold our place to represent the tens, okay? You're gonna do this every time. When you go to the second row of your multiplication problem in the standard algorithm, you're gonna put a zero here a lot of people just say, hey, it's a placeholder. Hey, it's a zero. I need you to understand that the reason that we're putting it there is because we are multiplying by the tens place, okay? So I'm gonna take that two tens and multiply it by the five. We're gonna go over to the ones first, okay? Two times five is 10. So I'm gonna put my zero, carry my one, okay? Two times five was 10, put my zero, carry my one. And then we're gonna do the two in the tens times the one in the tens. Two tens times one ten is two tens, plus that one extra one makes a three. Okay, two tens times one ten, think in your mind, two tens times one ten, that's really 200, plus another 10 that we carried over, that's 300. Do you see why it's 300 here now and why we needed that zero? Add these together, and do we have the same answer? We do. Okay, so if you look here, we took the 200 and the 100 and added them together for this one. The 40 and the 20 and added them together for 60. So we just kind of scrunched this together and made it into a smaller problem, kind of minimizing the steps that we needed to solve it. Okay, it is okay if you need to pause this video or stop this video, rewatch it in different places. This will take some time for you to get used to. It is a new way but I want you to realize that you're essentially doing the same thing. You're still multiplying by place values. You're just doing it in a shorter number of steps. Look through these, see if you can see the relationship between the three problems and how they kind of build towards this one. This one starts with more of that picture way of doing it and breaking it down visually. And then you're getting a little bit closer to standard algorithm using this method. And then to our final point of standard algorithm here. Again, rewatch the video if you need to at any point to help you better understand. You're also going to be working with word problems. This was just to help you build the skill, okay? But we are going to be making sure that we use word problems from here on out. And please remember your learning target. Let's see if we met it today. I can connect partial products and arrays to the standard algorithm of multiplication. Think back and, and reflect to see if you feel like you have mastered that. If you haven't, feel free to rewatch this video.